Welcome to the Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series right here at Comic Story. I'm Benny and I'll be your narrator. In this universe, the Power Rangers and the Turtles both exist in the exact same universe, with the Turtles knowing of the Power Rangers and the Power Rangers not knowing of the Turtles. Tommy Oliver has seemingly disappeared into the Foot Clan, and that has caused the Power Rangers to go looking for him, which of course has led to a run-in with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That was issue one, link to it's down below. Let's get into issue two today and continue our adventure with the Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you at the end of the video. As tensions continue to rise back on the rooftop, Jason asks why are they attacking their friend? And Raph asks, what do you mean your friend is thieving for the foot? Trini asks, these feet, are they bad? And Leo tells her, yeah, ancient evil ninja clan. Billy then asks, why didn't anyone ask why Tommy was stealing? And Mikey says, your buddy bailed a while ago. Raph then asks, are you sure the green guy didn't go like all evil again? And Zack asks, wait, how did you know about that? Raph says, Donnie here is a fan of yours. Donnie calls out, I am not that big of a fan. It's just that your ranger station is pretty cool. Plus the big guy is funny. As Jason and Leo clash one last time, they both step back yelling, that is enough. Jason goes on telling everyone, this fight is over until we figure out what's going on. Raph tells him, when we find your green friend, I'm gonna take out my end. But Donnie stops him. Don't mind Raph, that's just how he makes friends. Before the two teen groups can go on, the sound of a helicopter can be heard. And Leo says, that's our cue. How about it though? You can follow and explain what's going on before we get on Channel 6 News. A short while later, the Rangers are huddling up asking, are we sure about this? And Billy whispers that Zordon said it was okay. Kimmy says that they're about to break the rule that they never break. And Jason tells them, I know, but remember, we're doing this for Tommy, guys. Everyone turns back and Jason tells them, My name is Jason and I'm the leader of the Power Rangers. As the helmet fades, everyone else removes their stating their names and Donnie says, Look, they're just regular people! And Leo then tells them that they can have their introduction while they walk. Come on, sun's almost up. Once they get into the sewers, Kimmy asks why they live in a sewer. And Mikey tells her, It's killer, right? I can give you a tour if... But before he can go on, another voice shouts asking, are you guys insane fighting the Power Rangers out in the open? Do you know how close you came to being exposed? As April O'Neil walks in, Raph tells her to relax. We made nice, see? Meet the Power Rangers. Zack whispers and points to the corner of the sewer asking if they're just supposed to ignore the giant rat over there. And Master Splinter tells them, It's an honor to meet you. I must apologize for my son's presumptuous actions. Jason tells him, everything is fine, sir. Mistakes were made on both sides. And Splinter goes on, very well, please sit. Tell me how we may serve those who have served so many. Meanwhile, over at Shredder's stronghold, the Technodrome, the foot trains when Tommy pulls one of the ninjas into a side room. The ninja screams and Tommy yells, Tyler, don't scream, it's me. And Tyler asks, what, Tommy, how? Wait, you're the new foot elite, how the heck? Tommy tells him, I'm here to save your life. Come on, we can go out the... And before you ask, your dad called. Said his son went missing after getting mixed up with a martial arts cult. Tyler quietly yells, This is not a cult! And Richard isn't a real... Tommy spins back to quiet him, asking, Do you have any idea what's going on here? These aren't some kids smashing bottles on the street. It's domestic terrorism, Tyler. Tyler then asks, Why do you care? We haven't seen each other in years. And Tommy looks forward, telling him, we can talk about all of this when we get out. First we need to. But before he could finish, he's stunned from behind. Tyler radios. It is done. Moments later, Shredder appears telling him, You've done well. The Foot Clan accepts your offering. The next morning, the Rangers and the Turtles get to work trying to locate Tommy when Donnie asks, Did you see the robot? His name is Metalhead. He's made out of stuff we found in the sewer. What are you working on over there? Billy tells him, it's pretty cool. We have a robot too. As for what I'm working on, our morphers are extraterrestrial in origin and they carry a unique radiation signature. After a few tweaks, this Geiger counter can be used to turn into a morphin tracker. With it, we'll be able to find Tommy and really figure out what's going on here. Later that night, Korai watches over a group of foot elites who are training and tells them to make sure that they will never let their guard down. They never know when the enemy can strike. A voice tells her that she really couldn't have said it better. Just then, the Rangers and the Turtles break in through the sun window, and Jason tells everyone, hit them hard. As the fighting begins, Mikey asks Zack, what are his top three? And Zack says, uh, well, pepperoni, sausage, and garlic? 
and as much pineapple as possible. Mikey stops him. Pineapples? That's gross, dude. Mine are jelly beans, onions, and butterscotch. Breakfast to champions right there. Leo and Jason focus on Karai, and she asks, Really? Two on one? How chivalrous of you. Leo swings, telling her, You've been practicing. And Karai kicks both back, yelling, And you obviously haven't been. Jason gets up stating that he studied Musashi. And Leo tells him that that is why, with his single sword use, he should be using a Jingen Ryu attack. But as the two debate on which attack would work best against Karai, there's a loud thunk as a pot bounces off of Karai's head. Trini says, We could, you know, not overthink it and hit her in the head. When everyone finishes up with the rest of the foot, Jason sits Karai up, telling her, I'm gonna need you to take us to your friends. Karai laughs, stating that Tommy has such powerful friends, yet he attempted to infiltrate our organization all by himself. Perhaps he doesn't care for you as much as you care for him. Leo grips his sword, telling her that she's going to take them to the Technodrome, or... Karai tells him, you should know, I will never turn on my clan. And even if I could, it already would have been too late. Over at the Technodrome, Tommy begins to wake up asking, Where's Tyler? Shredder tells Baxter Stockman that it would seem that our new friend is awake. I was expecting a little more resilience from a Power Ranger. Tommy begins to call Shredder Master, but Shredder stops him, stating, We can forego your theatrics. We both know why you're here. Those in Dimension X are well-versed in your Power Rangers. Tommy quickly grabs his morpher, calling upon the power of the Dragon Sword. And then he asks, If you both know then, how about we go one-on-one? -on -one? Shredder picks up a device telling him, Another time, perhaps. Right now. As Shredder turns back, the box that he picked up fires a massive beam into Tommy. Tommy screams out in pain, falling to the ground. And Shredder says, I appreciate the demonstration but I'll take it from here. While Shredder drains Tommy's energy up in the Moon Palace, Rita Repulsa screams, Ah! Someone has my power coin! There's been a shift in the morphin grid, as if a door is suddenly smashed open. Power is changing. The universe is in flux. Squat asks that if someone has the power coin, they can't use it, right? And Finster strokes his whisker, stating, I will make a mole monster right away to retrieve it. And Goldar shouts, Please allow me to take care of the matter. Rita tells them, No, no, no. We must all deal with this. We will hurry to Earth and retrieve the coin. But it is possible that some of you might not return. As Rita leads everyone through a portal, a gruff voice then asks, What do we have here? Rocksteady says, Looks like we got ourselves some trespassers, eh, Bebop? Bebop snorts, Sure looks like it. And what's that smell? Someone's scared. Squat then says, how are these guys uglier than us? And Babu tells him, We probably shouldn't make fun of the guys with the guns. Shredder steps out of the shadows, telling them, I warned you that someone like her would try to interfere. She may call me. But Rita stops him, telling him, I don't care who you are, only what you possess. The dragon power coin. Return it or I'll melt this monstrosity to the ground. Shredder scoffs, taking out a morpher, shouting, Dragon Zord! As the room fills with emerald light, Shredder stands tall as the Green Ranger telling Rita, If you wish to have your coin back, you're more than welcome to try. And there you have it, issue number two with Green Ranger Shredder. If you didn't think that this could get any weirder in more of a fan's wet dream, then this is it. Hope you guys are enjoying it. And don't forget, guys, we will be doing more of this next week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep on top of it. And if you enjoy Power Rangers, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you want Transformers, then it'd be a good idea to keep subscribing because every week once this ends, we're going to bring you one of those. See you guys next time right here.